good was popping, yo fam. What's good was popping, oh eight hundred, yo fam. Whatever in it, yo fam. What's good was popping, yo fam. What's good was popping, oh eight hundred, yo fam. Whatever in it. 0800 yo fam what's good what's popping i'm khalid omari and welcome to my podcast whatever in it you know recently set up the website or blog rather to the podcast which is whateverinit.com so check that out you know it's spelled w h a t E V E R I double N I T dot com. You get me? Still repping 0800 Yo fam, but I thought, you know what? As I'm taking the podcast so much more seriously, I want to put this domain to use because it has been in use, but you get me? Like, this episode took a mad turn still. It all started, yeah, like. I was at work staring into a giant bauble that read Merry Christmas and it suddenly dawned on me. I wonder what Christmas is like for other people. On a reel. It popped into my head as I saw a Muslim family stop within my view, in between the gigantic bauble and where I was standing. Do people who don't celebrate Christmas and or other pseudo-pagan holidays look at us and think that we're all going to hell? Look at these pagans celebrating the solstice and phallic symbols under the guise of the most holy of holidays. Do they even know that celebrations like Easter and Christmas were absorbed by the church to increase their influence? Funnily enough, I was asked by one of my colleagues who doesn't celebrate Christmas as they aren't from the western sphere of influence whether I had always celebrated Christmas as I identified as Muslim. I replied yes unequivocally I know to a large degree that Christmas isn't what it is but I love Christmas like really love Christmas like ride out for Christmas ride out for the vibe not from a commercial standpoint but more so from a place where it's the only time of the year in the western sphere where everyone is on the same page There's a collective sense of magic in the air. Yes, celebrating Christmas is hella haram, but I gave up the pork and I self-identify as righteous and clean-hearted, so I'm sure Allah would allow me this one holiday to catch a collective Western Sphere vibe. I mean, the Lord understands that my upbringing spiritually was open and didn't really do the mosh trips, fasting, Ramadan and reading the Quran, the closest I got to starting my prayers was Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. I'm not even mocking the thing either. Like God knows that although I don't do the Muslim holidays, but I'm hella active at Christmas. As the years go by, I'm becoming more aware. But it's a journey in it. I'm trying to be more observant of Islam in that way. But I also said that Christmas is one of the things I don't foresee myself giving up. It's not even a commercial thing for me, I just love the magic. I love the reflection. I love how whatever has happened through the year, Christmas is a time to slow down and unwind. I just have so many happy memories of Christmas at school, but also some grim ones too. I recall times where, during the Christmas activities, the Jehovah Witnesses would be confined to a classroom far away from the Christmas fair. I'm not sure what they did in that classroom throughout the day to pass time, whilst the rest of us were eating cakes, buying festive themed sweets and singing Christmas carols. It must have been hard. When I think about it, this was prior to the name transition into the winter fair. I recall Muslims, Sikhs, Jews and everyone else getting involved and partaking in the nativity plays, carol singing and all else. The Jehovah Witnesses were the only ones who were excluded. Not sure if it was the no celebration thing. To be honest, I'm totally miffed. But to be fair, this is the second Christmas episode for the podcast and it's no secret that we're still in a global pandemic. 
as people are rushing around in a frenzy trying to keep themselves distracted by preparing for Christmas the government moved us into tier 3 and with quick succession came the recent tier 4 which is everywhere that's non-essential and non-click and collect closed again Somewhere in the midst of all of that, I was notified to self-isolate for 10 days by the NHS Track and Trace app before feeling fatigued and having a constant headache with loss of appetite, which ups the self-isolation to 14 days. The results from the test I did the day before the Track and Trace notification came back negative. However, because of the weird symptoms I'm experiencing, I'm eager to retake. I've been advised to retake using the NHS test, however the government have no more at-home kits available. I can't get to a driving test centre as it'll be putting others at risk. So I guess I'll be redoing the test with the same private test provider kits delivered to me on a weekly basis. I feel more fatigued than ever. Even with the slightest move, my eyes are crazy sensitive to light and I find myself wearing sunglasses indoors. For the first 48 hours, I ate nothing because I had no appetite for food. I was on a diet of water before introducing almonds at hour 36. I literally spent two whole days bedridden with exhaustion and a temperature. Not to mention a crazy headache and raised BPM alerts on my smartwatch. I was in a cycle of sleeping in 30 minute bursts, waking up to have a sip of water, go toilet and refill the water bottle before going to bed again. It's only at the 72nd hour that some of the strength is beginning to return but everything is a mahoosive chore. Some of the most menial tasks like folding laundry or thinking can make me feel ever more exhausted. I noticed the correlation in eating and energy so I've been reintroducing food into my system bit by bit. From almonds to a bowl of Rice Krispies to a bowl of Weetabix to a clementine to a cheese and onion pasty baked in the oven to a small share of jerk chicken and rice and peas. Layering up over the course of the past 24 hours has helped me but I still feel fragile. During my time in a cycle of sleep and sip I've been doing a lot of personal reflection, especially around what got me here. I work in a public facing role where I'm constantly exposed to random strangers on an everyday basis. No matter how much I keep my distance and keep the necessary precautions around sanitizing etc, I'll always be in danger. As someone with a pre-existing health condition such as type 2 diabetes and hypertension, I'm high risk and shouldn't in theory be exposing myself, however, there's no other options. I have bills to pay. Imagine that. I guess at the start, I could have opted to work from home as an operator, but I admit that I was naive in thinking that I couldn't get caught if I followed the precautions. My self-reflection had me wondering also how I'd gotten in a predicament in life whereby I had no control over how and when I'd work. The big machine of capitalism keeps us turning perpetually and I'm nothing but a miniature cog which is in some respects replaceable should anything happen. What's my plan? The scary thing is that I really haven't got a specific exit strategy. I've got so much potential but haven't figured out what my target is. I feel underutilised in life to a large degree as my grandiose visions and purpose can't fit inside a small box. Am I terrified of returning to work and being exposed to random members of the public? 100%. I really need to dedicate my energy to removing self out of a customer face and roll into something I can do remotely out of reach from random members of the public. Because until now, I don't think I really understood the gravity of what we're dealing with. But hey, keep you updated with that one. We couldn't be any further than where we were last year. I mean, I was hitting the gym and listening to podcasts from The Economist and Financial Times who were reporting what was happening in Wuhan as early as November. I injured my tendon in my wrist during the first workout of 2020 
and it didn't really get better or feel normal until a few months ago. People are speculating whether Christmas is cancelled, but I say nah. The spirit of the holiday season is well and truly alive. You've just got to believe. And after the kind of year 2020 has been, it will be a chance to slow down and reflect, consume less, and really be thankful for the small things like your health and well-being. As I write this, I can barely type a few lines with my brain and body feeling proper tired. But it's a must that I plough through because I really want to spread the joy of Christmas and also make you realise that despite whatever is going on for me and many others, we have to remain optimistic and hopeful that things will get better. Also, we must not negate some of the miniature and mundane things we take for granted like being able to fold and tidy away laundry without feeling tired. Many of you are miles away from your families, but we must remember that the world of technology has brought us even closer. In the same manner that we utilise group FaceTime, WhatsApp, Zoom, WebEx, Microsoft Rooms, Twitch streams, etc. Think about the ways that you can bring yourselves closer together even though geographically and restriction-wise you may be further apart. Until next episode, Merry Christmas, peace, love, blessings, prosperity, health, well-being, gratitude. Hasta el lunes. Adios.